inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows. Hi, welcome back to Not Your Mother's Hobbies. Today, we're checking out our next Dread Moon miniature. It is the Dread Cultist. This is our first kind of generic cultist that uh, Hero Quest has had. I don't think Hero Quest has ever had a generic cultist, so first time for everything. To go along with our generic theme, we also have some cool culty robes and uh, a, a cool Praise the Demon Ghost Lord pose. So let's get to it. First things first, any cultist worth their salt wears creepy black robes. So we've got Black Templar for just that. We're going to put that on all of the large robe spots. So not the trim. We're going to avoid all of the sculpted trim on this guy. And just focus on the large open sections of his, uh, of his robes. He's got a few layers going on, so keep an eye on those. Uh, reference the artwork or what I'm doing to see kind of where the the black should go in between, but it should be pretty simple. Uh, there's a lots of embossing when it comes to the trim and whatnot, so just follow that along or follow along with me. Black is the predominant color on this guy, so just take your time, and uh, the better you do on this step, uh, the less work you have to do later on. We're going to use Gelman Flesh for his fleshy bits. You could use any flesh recipe to go underneath. I'm going to do a, a, some mixes. We've got about four of these guys, so breaking them up uh, with some randomness, some individuality, just goes that little extra touch. And it, it's just two hands, so it won't take that much effort to change it up. We're also going to use this on all of his gold iconography. So he's got a little belt buckle, he's got some chains. Uh, and that gold emblem on the front of his skirt. Wraithbone, of course, or any other off-white or white that you want to use to do cleanup. Uh, I had some cleanup here, <laughs> different angle. Uh, but on that trim, you know, I had some cleanup to do. There was some over splatter with the black. We want to make sure that we have nice lines for our, uh, our trim since that's a big focal point. Snakebite leather or any brown that you want to do. You could do a darker brown. You could do a warmer brown. Anything like that. Uh, I'm using snakebite. It's my little standby for the belt, the, the little sash loop, and of course his little booties. Basilicanum gray for our silver metallics. We could also put some of this uh, on the bottom half of that spooky mask. As you'll see coming up pretty quick right there. Bloop bloop. Don't worry about the jaw because you can always bring that back out with the highlights later on for the skull mask. Blood Angel Red, getting to the trim. Uh, the trim on this guy is a huge focal point. If you've done the black uh, robes as neat as you can, you tidied it up, then you can really be a lot looser on this because if you have any overspill with the red, the black uh, robes, the, the black color is gonna really, you know, it's just gonna absorb it and, and you're gonna uh, be able to go a lot loosey-goosey um, and, and quicker and faster with your red trim. You won't have to be as precise. So the work that you do beforehand, specifically with black or a dark color on the outside, uh, the quicker and dirtier you can do uh, with your trim and your decoration. So remember that one. Layering up now, uh, we're gonna use bold titanium white here just do a rough little dry brush all over this guy. And that's gonna pick out our, our usual kind of uh, the way that we do red. That's gonna pick out the trim there. And it's also gonna brighten up um, this black robe action. Don't worry with the black robes at least about going a little heavier. Uh, with the red, uh, you don't wanna go too heavy, but you do wanna really catch those edges like you've seen before on some of our capes and other stuff like that. This should be a pretty good mix. You can go all over uh, and not really have to worry too, too much. Just kinda gauge yourself about how heavy or light you're going uh, and you should be fine. Got this one going in real time here, or mostly real time. I'll show you most of the process. So you can see just how quickly uh, you can cover this guy and, and bring up all those details. 
Then we're going to go over with Nuln Oil all of the black areas one more time and that's going to just dull it down in case he got a little dusty or you, you brighten him up a little too much, you know, what have you. It's going to tie that dry brush together um, and, and keep those values still that we've added. Just add a little tonal range, you know what I mean? Wraith bone here for the mask, the skull mask. Just pop it in some tiny little highlights here, bringing it up. You can do more than one layer and really bring it up higher. And you can even go further if you wanted with some bold titanium white. I don't do that on this guy, but you totally can. Keep that as one of your extra touches to save for the fairy end. Rich Peter Armor, going over all of our gold parts. You know that's my favorite gold, and so use here. We're doing the same as we always do, all over those Gulliman Flesh base-coated areas. You don't have to be super precise because that Gulliman Flesh is going to help uh, blend edges, especially when we put Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss over. Now remember, these gloss paints that I use are out of print, and I'll keep saying it as long as I remember to. Uh, you can just use Reichland Flesh Shade and a gloss wash over top or a gloss uh, uh, pass over top. Gunmetal here for all of our silver metallics. Only the little sacrificial scythe thing he's got going on. He got one weapon. He's not using it, but that doesn't mean he can't. Uh, Nuln Oil Gloss on top of that. Bears repeating. Just mix the two together 50-50 or do one layer at a time of a dark wash with a gloss over top. Then we're doing our skin, Cadian Flesh, to just even things out if we've got some sploshy, splooshy splotches. You know, any tide marks or anything um, of that kind of matter, as well as to just even the tone out. Kislev Flesh for some quick and dirty highlights, bringing up those values. He's just got two hands, so this one should be pretty dang quick. Keep it on, keep it on with the flesh. We go Pallid Witch Flesh for that nice, juicy, glistening Christmas ham <laughs> flesh I like to do. Just It just adds another little point of interest uh, on, on the, the skin tones. Chrome. This is our ping pong plingy highlight. Put that on all of our uh, steel as well as a shining, sparkling point of interest on all of our golds. And then we base him as usual with a gray paint, a texture paint, dry brush, wash, and dry brush. There you have it, folks. One Dread Cultist, all painted up as per the artwork. We got this really nice popping contrast between our colors. Black always goes with red and vice versa. So this is a really kind of classical uh, scheme that I'm, I'm glad they chose. A little different from the artwork, uh, but that's okay. They can't always translate everything 100%. Now, if you wanted to see a alternative way you could do this, a very simple alternative uh, paint scheme, you just invert the colors. And immediately, like I said, black and red, red and black goes perfect. Immediately, you got another guy. You can see on this one, I did do what I mentioned previously. I added some bold titanium white to the mask. Just makes that mask pop a little more. I didn't want it to get lost uh, in, in all that bright red, so I chose to do it on this guy. That's two minis in the bag for Dread Moon. What are you looking for coming up? Dread Moon came with a lot of unique sculpts. Uh, all those elven mercenaries you can hire, some interesting new elven enemies, as well as the Dread Wraith herself. Let me know down in the comments below what you're excited for in this expansion, whether that's anything I've mentioned or even the terrain. We got a whole lot of Dread Moon coming up. We've got the Monks, and now we got the Ogre Horde too. Give me a like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you like gaming stuff, check out my Twitch, where I'm currently playing Baldur's Gate 3. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.